Yesterday was the anniversary of 9-11, so the Wall Street Journal decided to slap us all in the face by having Dick Cheney write an op-ed reminding us of his existence. So let's break that down here. The title is, Dangers rise as America retreats 15 years after 9-11. The next president will face greater risks and a weaker military to combat them. Okay, um, that's the title and the subtitle. Already wrong. Already wrong. Already fucking wrong. It's Dick Cheney, what do you expect? Uh, I would love to see anybody, anybody in the mainstream media just take a second to question the basic premises that people like Dick Cheney put forward as irrefutable fact. Yeah, uh, the military, oh my god, great, we're gonna face greater risks as a weaker military. Weak military, weak, it's so weak. Okay, dude, we have 800 military bases around the world at a cost of maintaining them of a hundred billion dollars every single year. We can't even get the water to be clean in some places around the U.S. Our infrastructure gets a grade of D. But we're spending a hundred billion dollars a year to have bases all over the world. 800 military bases. Over 50% of discretionary spending goes to uh, the military. Over 50%. What are you talking about, a weak military? That makes absolutely no sense. You're simply making it up. That's not a thing. The idea of, oh, the United States, God damn it, we gotta spend more. We already spend more than, what is it? The, ne the next 12 countries combined, and most of them are our allies? Oh, you weak military, so weak! It's so weak, even though it is literally the most powerful military ever created by human beings, ever. Ever. But he just says it. A weak military. You, the, the anger I have, and uh, that I can't even put it into words against a cretin and a savage like Dick Cheney and what he represents. He's just a bad dude. He's just an immoral bastard, and he's a fucking liar. Okay, and we're just discussing the title and the subtitle right now. I haven't even gotten into the article. Let's go ahead and do that. He says, The president, who came into office promising to end wars, has made war more likely by diminishing America's strength and deterrence ability. Again, factually not true. He doesn't seem to understand that the credible threat of military force gives substance and meaning to our diplomacy. By reducing the size and strength of our forces, he has ensured that future wars will be longer and put more American lives at risk. Okay. Hey, Dick. Obama has intervened in seven different countries. Seven different countries. That's more than President Bush. So let me ask you, what do you want him to do? What do you want him to invade 16 countries? 37 countries? Every single country? What do you want him to do? What do you want him to do? What do you want him to do? Seriously, what do you want him to do? He's in seven different countries. It varies from country to country, so in some countries, well, it's just run-of-the-mill drone strikes, which, by the way, kill 90% civilians. Well done, Obama, on that one. But in other countries, it's uh, traditional airstrikes. And in other countries, it's you have special ops boots on the ground. And in some countries like Afghanistan, you still kind of have a traditional war going on where there's thousands of soldiers who are there at bases, and every now and then they do some missions. So what do you want them to do? He's intervened in seven different countries. He's bombed seven different countries. I, I probably, honestly, and I'm as educated as it gets on this stuff, I probably can't even name all seven of them because that's how many there are. Pakistan, Yemen, Somalia, Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya. I got it, seven. I See, even I struggle with it and I fucking do this shit for a living. That's a problem, don't you think? No, he doesn't think it's a problem. He thinks more. More. I want to do more. I don't care that he's in involved in seven different countries. By the way, who should be more mad at Obama for this? Me. Actual liberals, actual progressives. So what are you doing? You're fucking 90% kill the wrong people with drones. You think maybe you're going to increase terrorism? Did you know the Taliban today controls more territory and is more powerful in Afghanistan than when we started the war on terror and when we first invaded Afghanistan in 2001? We wasted trillions of dollars 
and now the Taliban is more powerful? You think maybe this was not the right approach? If we can prove it failed, the opposite happened of what you wanted to happen. No, more war is the answer. It's always the answer. So even when Obama says, you know what, neocons, I kind of agree with you, and I'm going to do these things. The difference between Obama and the neocons is Obama's like, I'm going to use American power, but I'm not going to, like, ground invade every country. I'll do some drones here, some traditional airstrikes here. Cheney goes, no! Ground invade everywhere and add more countries to the list. Brilliant idea, dick. By the way, this gets to the, the main point here, which is neoconservatism and American exceptionalism, these things really manifest in the real world as a fundamentalist religion. Because the answer is always the same. It's always the same. More war, more America, more torture, we're going to get to that in a second. And, uh, by the way, the hilarious point of, oh, uh, I'm going to be so tough on terror, but we should also boost our relationship with Saudi Arabia. What? <laughs> the country that's most responsible for spreading radical Islamic terrorism. They're like, yeah. Dick Cheney's like, yeah, they're our buddies. Again, fundamentalist religion. The answer is always the same. More war, more America. End of conversation. It's insanely stupid. But then again, it's a fundamentalist religion. What do you expect? All right, let's continue. Mr. Obama moved to take the nation off a war footing and return to the failed policies of the 1990s when terrorism was treated as a law enforcement matter. It didn't matter that the enhanced interrogation program produced information that prevented attacks. Okay, citation needed, bitch! Uh, saved American lives, citation needed. We now know, and we now know contributed to the capture and killing of Osama bin Laden. Again, citation needed, you're making shit up. Mr. Obama ended the program, publicly revealed its techniques, and failed to put any effective terrorist interrogation program in its place. Uh, in other words, why are you not torturing anymore? <laughs> That's what he's saying. And th this is all lies. Guys, we covered the story in detail. Dick Cheney likes to pretend like the torture report doesn't exist. <laughs> we read the torture report, we covered the torture report. Did you know they admit, they admit to at least 20% of the people that we tortured being innocent. And that's just what they admit. What's the reality? I don't know. 50%, 60%, all of them? Who the fuck knows? That's just what they admit. So uh, let's even go with that number just to be kind. 20% of the ones we tortured were innocent. What kind of torture did we do? Uh, well, we did classic sleep deprivation. We did... Um, Anal rape torture, stay classy, did mock burials, all types of savage, barbaric ideas that honestly were birthed out of communist China. We used a communist Chinese manual on how to torture, to torture, and then we turn around and go, what, it's not torture, it's fucking enhanced interrogation, what are you talking about? So, we do this, which destroys our morality. And then we act like, well, no, but you don't get it. It's totally cool when we do it. But it's not cool when we do it. You didn't even get the right people. Not that if you, if you got the right people that it would be okay because you're violating international law and basic human rights. But look at what you did. There are stories of going into, uh, we cut a deal with warlords in Afghanistan and Pakistan and told them, look, we got attacked on 9-11. You got to help us out and send us these jihadists. So what did they do? They just rounded up people they didn't like and shipped them to us. They weren't fucking jihadists. They weren't jihadists. But idiot Dick Cheney and George Bush, ah, oh, thanks! So trustworthy, these Pakistani warlords and Afghanistan warlords. And what fucking happened? We ended up torturing the wrong people! And he's still out there like, oh, why did Obama fuck up this great thing that we had going where we kept torturing people? And again, just totally made up. Uh, yeah, um, uh, yeah, no, when we tortured, we, we got good information. Okay, you do know that it was torture that led to the false confession and report of, yeah, Iraq did 9-11. But no, it was no, totally, it was to torture was great. Okay, more. When Mr. Obama took the oath of office on January 20th, 2009, Iraq was stable. Huh. Following the surge ordered by President Bush, Al-Qaeda in Iraq had largely been defeated, as had the Shiite militias. Oh, yes. Yes, Dick, I know. Yes, Dick. Iraq was just so fantastic under you guys. I mean, really, they were a flourishing democracy. One would say even in competition with Denmark for the most lovely country on the planet. What the fuck are you saying, man? How stupid do you think we are? No, no, Iraq was totally cool by then. 
Really? So notice, this is the trick that they did at the time, and I remember my mind being blown over it because of how disingenuous it was. So what they would do is, if the violence ticked up, you know what they'd say? It proves it's working. Uh, the surge is working. I know the surge is working. Why? The violence ticked up. That proves the, quote, insurgency is in its last throes. Then when violent violence went down, they'd go, see? It worked. The violence went down. Then the violence would go back up. They'd go, uh, further proof that it's working. The insurgency is in its last throes. So notice the trick that they play on you there. Whether the violence goes up, whether the violence goes down, and it kept doing both repeatedly. They would say, see? Everything, by definition, is evidence that it's working. So it is now a non-falsifiable claim that the surge is working. Again, what do we see here? <laughs> Neoconservatism and American exceptionalism being a fundamentalist religion. The answer is always the same. More America is better. More war is better. So, hey, we permanently occupy you. Violence goes up and down. We end up killing massive numbers of civilians. Whatever. It's still better because I say it's better. If the violence is worse, us being there is better. If the violence is down, us being there is better. It's always better. So what's the end logic of this? Well, you already know what the end logic is. We've seen it a million times. They've described it. Some people have openly said it. Lindsey Graham has openly said it. Quote, you don't leave. A reporter asks him, okay, so you want to stay in Iraq. At what point do you want to leave? He goes, you don't leave. Yeah, that sounds like something really popular. You know, a fucking random dude in Nebraska who's a hardworking taxpayer wants to see, you know, a significant chunk of his tax money going to invading and occupying a country that didn't attack us and then we stay there. Great. No, totally reasonable. Only 17% of the American people still want to be in Afghanistan and that's viewed as the more reasonable war than Iraq. We don't agree with your bullshit, dick. We don't agree with it. We don't want to be the, you know, invaders and crusaders and imperialists around the world and still have these 800 military bases. As our infrastructure falls apart at home, we can't even get clean water, and 45,000 people die every year for lack of basic medical care. But Dick Cheney's, oh, but more war, more war. Why doesn't Obama, he only did seven interventions? What a pussy. You gotta do more, gotta do more. Dick, nobody likes you. Go away. You make no sense. You're America's... Barking clown idiot savage barbarian. Can I be any more clear?